Okay, uh, this is uh, another video in that uh, role-playing group. Uh, so if you're if you don't watch me for these videos, then uh, this video isn't for you. But anyway, it's been a little bit, and I rewatched I watched over that. Uh, first video on this topic I made and I realized that I made two errors one I did not talk about my homebrew system enough to really call that a homebrew video and two I did not talk about my uh, little Mary Sue character that I made uh, and I'm gonna the first one about it, I'm really gonna stretch out stretch out my homebrew system uh, explanation over the course of uh, this series just because uh, I have so many rules that I've adapted and uh, so many rules that I've kind of made up in in a way and uh, it would be difficult for me to recall all of them because I don't really make a list of rules that would be that would be useful for that kind of thing. It's more a combination of all the editions of Dungeons and Dragons that I have thoroughly investigated because there's things in them that I really like and things in them that I really dislike. And it's just how do I put this? None of them are perfect. And I guess that's why people like Pathfinder so much. They they call it Dungeons and Dragons the way it's supposed to be, but I haven't really investigated Pathfinder, but I've heard basically that it's D D perfected. But something I really don't like about it, from what I've heard, is that wizards can take fighters and fighters can take wizards. And this is all at high level. And what really seems stupid to me is that you don't want to go up against a really high level mage. You can, but you really you'll regret it. That's basically a, that's my, my opinion and I've incorporated that into my homebrew system. I've given them uh, a ridiculous l amount of leeway with spells and spell selections and I don't think I've given them too many spell slots but the ones I, I've really only experimented with one wizard, and uh, as of late, I'm turning I've turned him into a villain. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The story of the day is about a little battle that. My uh, my characters had. Uh, I, but I'll get to that eventually. The now to talk about S. S is a different. Is he's a god, but he is a character as well. If that makes any sense. He has character classes, and I use the divine rules from uh, the Hypertext D20 source document. I, I, can, I found it online, and well, I'll link it below. So, he has insane amount of power, and I did not realize that 
his power was so great until this little excur until this little excursion and uh, I didn't realize how much damage he could do until his little adventure in hell so what I anyway about this little battle uh, S is another name for a character I made up it, his name is Sartogen I probably didn't pronounce uh, that clearly enough for you but it's good because I you start I use his name for many things Sargent is basically the name of an imaginary friend that I made up I know it's not real but it's just my way of coping with the blandness of my life and uh, why am I telling you this it's just you're not my therapist, but this uh, character that I made up kicks all sorts of ass, and this is exemplified in the battle, and I've beaten around the bush enough. Basically what happened was, after a little excursion with an Ableth, and I threw uh, my player into the den of an Ableth. Basically, uh, the wizard that I was in, that I'd introduced was the mayor of a city, and I haven't I've yet to name the city, but it's quite large. It has only four gates in and out, and it's a very cardinal direction oriented city. The city is, uh, it has a huge market in the center that branches off in all directions. And in the center of the market is the capital. So, the, these the characters are sitting, chilling around the capital when all of a sudden they got it. They, I think it was because they were, they, no, they weren't in the capital. They left to acquire, no, yeah, the, the dragon, the dragon incident. The, the thing I talked about before this, the dragon incident. Basically, my player called, summoned this wizard, and the wizard was long enough, away long enough for a group to assassinate the entire t city council. And the when they, when these characters came back, uh, the council chamber was in a huge mess and there was blood everywhere and bodies and there was a note that said that like was in uh, I think it had a symbol on it I'm not I don't really remember but the symbol uh, was of this clan of kobolds and this was and this wizard had encountered this clan of kobolds bef once before but never really out but never really inside their own den and he was too angry at them at the kobolds to Things straight because they basically slaughtered his entire, uh, all of his friends. So he just went went all gung ho, and the players went all gung ho into the den of the kobolds. And this was very much like 
Tucker's Kobolds, except I changed it a bit. I kept the passageway with murder holes and fire. Basically, they had they lit the tunnel on fire, the entrance tunnel to the mine on fire. And as my characters were running, they were getting shot at through little murder holes in the walls all the way down this corridor. And when they open, and the I had set so there was this uh, partition, I think it's called. Basically, a wooden log was set up on the other side of the door at the end of the hallway so that when it op was opened or when this uh, when it was when the door was opened or cleared this wooden log would would swing in and fucking hit the the player who was stupid enough to open the door back into the hallway with on and onto the ground that was burning but this is this is not really a big deal because my wizard had uh, resist fire enough to have no ill effects from the fiery floor but the character that got blitzed was the only player character in my game, which was my little youngest brother. So he gets hit, falls backwards, and his torch is just incinerated by the fire. So he just he t does he takes damage, but it's absorbed by his divine uh, uh, resistances. So he's like, "Fuck that!" He gets up and just stumbles into this room. And I had made it so to a very Edgar Allan Poe ripoff because the walls were. The walls were superheated, and they were closing in from all sides. Basically, the room would shift, and the walls would cover the, the walls would cover the entranceway, and then they would start closing in. And there was this little pit in the center that led straight down. Well, it's very far down when I th now I think about it. So they both jump down and into this immense water lake, this immense underground lake. And right now my player character is just thinking, uh, just trying to find a way out. And he didn't think to go back up the way he came because this trap resets just about maybe five, ten minutes. But the thing is, I have been rolling for, well, just about every action they took. I've been rolling for this Ableth to, the Ableth in the underground lake to dominate them. And I don't know how they did it. But they managed to resist every single attempt that I made with this Ableth. And but this is when things started to go downhill. My uh, the only player in the game was really stupid. He was just a hack and slash guy. He doesn't really think with his head. And besides, he didn't really know what an Ableth was or that they even existed. So 
he starts going into the water to basically swim away out. It, but this was not water. This was the Abolesque goo. You know, the goo that it sprays at people to make them more, to make them breathe basically water and make them trapped in water, basically. So, now I had to roll twice for this guy. So, I was rolling and I made it with the goo. And so I say, well, your character feels, is start, is starting to feel very comfortable in the water. In fact, he feels like it's his home now. And uh, this really scared my player for some reason. Uh, oh wait, it wasn't for some reason. It was because this water was especially slimy and uh, the yeah we'd established right when he got in the water he found that this water was very slimy so it wasn't ordinary water to him so he's in a panic now he's he makes a beeline back for the back for the small area of land that from whence he came but he sees off in the murky distance because there was a because the wizard was casting a light spell uh, in about a hundred feet radius from the island, so he could see off in the distance this black cloud swimming around and stops. So, and as he's swimming, it starts moving closer towards him, and he's like, "Oh shit!" And he makes a fucking beeline. He makes it to the shore. But it had already been a couple minutes, so. But I was very merciful because I didn't want to really uh, TPK this this the only player that would play with me. So what I did was I had the wizard uh, instantly recognize what this was because he had I basically made him like the adventuring sort because before he was uh, the mayor of the city he was a traveling alchemist and uh, he would accompany parties and uh, heal them and give them special potions to make them uh, tougher and, he went through about four parties, I think. I'm just guessing. And one of these parties was the were the victims of an Aboleth. So he knew exactly what this was, and he knew how to deal with it because of that harrowing experience for him. So he just fixed the the curse of the Aboleth that had fallen on my that had fallen onto this player. So what he then this player was really freaked out. He wanted to get the hell out as fast as he could. So he went back up and up the way he came and the trap was reset, sure enough. But there was an opening on the other side. So uh, he just wants to find a way out that wasn't exactly the way he came in because this mine had a very sturdy door that was bolted shut from the other side. Because these kobolds did, they, 
the way they came in was not the way the kobolds go in. And this was... Yeah, I'm going to make the battle a different video. Uh, okay, anyway. the He's fucking around the traps. Uh, he's triggering every one of them. Because this the other side of this room had a, a net of ropes that if even one of them was was disturbed by a creature then he then the blades on the other side the blades down the hallway there were about 20 of them you know like in Skyrim or those games that blades are in hallways they just shink 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 and just cut up certain sections of the hallway I think that what they would do was uh, there would be like this uh, cir this circle of blades on and like like a, on the side of the hallway and it would turn around and thanks to the motion it would cut it would cut thing air or sections of air inside the hallway so that's what I had done and there were about 20 of these and since he was still flying he was being hit by these things and he was carrying the wizard he was nice but the blades were coming from the bottom up so they were hitting him and not the wizard. So he t I rolled a 1d100 roll, just one. But it was enough to fucking make him bleed as fuck. Because I, I think I rolled like an 86, and that was over half his hit points. But even if I rolled a straight 100, it wouldn't have killed him. So. I had to make a strength check just to see if he dropped the wizard because he was really bloodied and bruised because of it. I wouldn't have made him make a strength check if he wasn't if he wouldn't have been bloodied, but he was, and he drops the wizard right in the next room, and this wizard tumbled uh, on into the end of the wall and he triggered the. Actually, there were there weren't any traps in this room. There, it was a huge room though. But they made a shitload of noise. So, what I had done was I put this room on the other side of the Kobold's dining area. And I guess. Uh, what I should tell you right now is that these kobolds were somehow immune to the the dominate effect of the Yabaleth. And this was very frustrating for the Yabaleth, I suppose, but it, it's past history now. And so it's just they immediately shut up. So but they but they the characters heard these this huge racket of conversation on the other side of the wall beforehand. So, I, the player character uh, introduced himself, and there was no response. He asked if there was anyone on the other side, and he heard a faint, no. That was just, uh, that brought a little chuckle to him. What happened was, 
he got his character got frustrated by that and used his godly power to basically he had an energy blast ability that would that would produce sonic energy like a shitload of sonic energy so he blasted through this wall no wait he didn't do he didn't do that he did, he did he did get through the wall, but what he did was I had to make a strength check because he wanted to punch through the wall. His first uh, check failed, but I figured that since he has two hands, he well, could make two. So he his first check fails. Uh, he injures his hand, but he's a god; he'll heal right away. And the second makes it. So he punches a section of the wall out. It crumbles and... By now, by this point, the kobolds had left the dining room, the dining area and uh, had, gone, had gone to their panic room. So, what I did was, I think it was, yeah, at this point, my character, my youngest brother wanted to go to an outer plane, so I had him go into the other room and these kobolds had were neighbors with a portal but they never went in there because there were two large go stat golems that would kill anything that moved in that room but these characters uh, pulled it off they just destroyed the golems And but the thing was, by the they had been getting really sick of this shit. My player character had been getting really sick of this dungeon, so he just ran away out, ran out of this dungeon, really fast. And he wanted to fucking end these uh, kobolds because they had been because of the little fire-filled passageway. So what he tried to do, he rolled. I basically gave him five rolls for the destruction of the entrance because this mine was basically a. Uh, doorway into a hill that would it was a small hill and this hello camera's fucking up on me hello camera camera oh well uh, it'll eventually fix itself but anyway this uh the pistol, so he just energy blur to completely entrance. And I had five trees I get so was I roll this I think it was, it was really high. I think it was I got eighteen. So I rolled one, gave him five counts to beat that roll. And he beat that roll. Then the then the dungeon Collapse. So, F on the fifth roll succeeded. But I pretty much did no this interest uh, under your cottage. So this really tipped him off. Was another. So, but I wasn't having any of this shit. Because I wanted to continue with the plot. So I made him roll perception checks and 
the this other entrance for the bolts to go through was hidden very well. It was hidden under leaves. Like a pile of leaves and marked by a tree stump. But you wouldn't guess that it was an entrance. Because these, uh, the entrance was very well hidden. It looked like a regular part of the environment. And what these, I rolled, I had not roll perception check. Basically, I had roll four because uh, cardinal directions and all that. And he failed every single one. So he didn't find the entrance. He's fucking pissed. And uh, then comes the battle. So for the sake of making this video as short as possible, I'm going to stop here and uh, and wait until the battle comes. And wait until I figure wait until I fit well find some time to make the battle. But, so, uh, until next time, see ya.